However thou hast formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and, uh, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall be no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto children's children to keep such as his covenant unto those who remember his commandments to do them. Please remain standing. Let us pray. Loving, compassionate Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us together today as we convocate to celebrate the life of your servant, Harvey Wright. We're thankful, dear Lord, that we are of sound mind and body, but we are even more thankful that if we were not and we've trusted you, we will arise to an everlasting life, void of all cares. Meanwhile, as we meet today, may your will be done and your name be glorified as we present our tributes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome you to the Mandeville Seventh-day Adventist Church on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Joel Schillingford, our associate pastor, Pastor Giovanni Brown, the Board of Elders, the church board, and members, we welcome you. We will have as our opening hymn found in the program the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Please stand. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect, perfect communion, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Thank you, thank you. And now we will have, you may be seated. Now we will have the first lesson by Sister Judith Thomas. Good morning. The first lesson reading is taken from Revelation 21, verses 1 through 5. I will read in your hearing. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Five, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. I think this would be a good place for Brother Rose to do a musical tribute. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth and song? As burdens press and the cares distress, and the way grows weary and long. Oh, yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark? With a nameless dread and fear As the daylight fades into deep night shades Does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares I know he cares, his heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? 
and my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it aught to him? Does he see? Oh, yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, you can know your Savior cares. Now, uh, we'll have the second lesson by Brother Tubal Monte. The 23rd Psalms is taken from Psalms 23rd. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. Ye that are the seed of Jacob, glorify him. Sorry, sorry. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restored my soul beside his still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of, of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It's time to introduce the speaker, our pastor, Joel Schillingford. He's been our pastor for the past 17 months. No, actually, this August will be two years. You do the math. All right. He is married to the beautiful Minerva, and with which he shares two children, Jasher and Jai. Pastor Schillingford is a man of God who is also a, a professional counselor, psychologist, and he believes in administering care with candor. After Pastor Giovanni, the associate, Pastor Giovanni Brown, does the music of meditation, the next voice you will hear is Pastor Joel Schillingford. 
Thank you. I, uh, there is a song that I think a lot of us know. And so if you could join me even in singing that, it would be very good. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. If you know the chorus, please read to join and sing. All my life you have been faithful, oh yes you have. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God We'll do the second verse again I love your voice you have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Sing oh, oh, all my life Sing all my life You have been faithful And all my life You have been so, so good Every breath And I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after. My life laid down. What a wonderful, wonderful song. 
We had two lovely songs done here, one by Pastor Brown, which we just heard, and I know Pastor Brown is a singer and a musician, but Brother Rose, I did not know, but he sang so wonderfully. Let me offer sympathy and condolences to the family and friends of the late Harvey Wright. We are deeply saddened by your loss and we pray that your time grieving his loss and that the Lord will work for you and walk with you in this time. As per usual, there is a short sermonette for service of thanksgiving. And I have chosen to pitch my tent in the book of First Timothy and in the book of Ecclesiastes. First Timothy reads, First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 7 reads, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing with us. And having food and raiment, with these shall we be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kind. Of evil. And let me share with you what the book of Ecclesiastes has to say. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 reads, I said in my heart, Come now, I will test you with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure. But surely this also was vanity. I said to laughter, Madness! And of mirth, what does it accomplish? I searched my heart, how to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold of folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under the heaven all the days of my life. I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which uh, to water the growing trees and the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered my, for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excellent, more than all who were in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not hold it from me. For my heart rejoiced in my labor, and this was my reward after my labor. Then I looked on all the works of my hands, my hands had done. And on the labor in which I had toiled. And indeed all, my, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. A chasing after the wind. Therefore was no profit under the sun. What is man? The wise man Solomon is the author of the book of Ecclesiastes. If you know basic Bible knowledge, you recognize that Solomon was the son of King David with Bathsheba. Solomon was gifted with wisdom. And as a result of that, Solomon received not only wisdom but wealth. 
Solomon reigned in Israel as king over Israel, and Israel prospered under his reign as king. And the Bible tells us that Solomon was such a great king, he was so lavish that he had a thousand wives and many concubines. He said he built orchards and gardens. He said that he had anything his heart desired, he did not withhold it from himself. He built buildings. He was great. He was mighty. Any woman Solomon wanted, he could just say, yo, your girl, come on, you're going to be my wife today. And that was it. He had all the money he needed. He had all the fame he needed and all the popularity he needed. In fact, Solomon was Manayard. But after it all, Solomon came to the conclusion, he said, all of these things, it was a chasing after the wind. There was no profit under the sun. Solomon lived his life in pleasure and wisdom and, and, and wealth. But at the end of his days, when he's looking back on all what he has done, he said, these things were nothing to me now. It was only a chasing after the wind. The phrase, a chasing after the wind, you know what it means? You know what is to count sand and try to catch the wind? Have you ever tried to count sand? Have you ever tried to count sand? Have you ever gone by the seaside by the Monte and say, let me try to count the sand and say one grain, two grains, three grains, four grains, five grains, six grains. Have you ever tried to do that? Have you ever tried to catch the wind in your hand? All right, now me have him. Now me catch it. Can you really do that? Well, Solomon said, all what he had accomplished, it is like trying to catch the wind. Exercises in futility. We move over to the New Testament, and, and the Bible tells us in, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, he said, he said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry out nothing. What a text. The message here to us today. What is man? The message here to us today, what profiteth a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? The message to us today is that there is nothing that you can accomplish in this life that is worth more than salvation. The message is us to, 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 or to us today, it says, listen to me, it doesn't matter what you have accomplished when time shall be no more and when you get old and your teeth drop off and you have wigs and fake hair and whatever the case is. Reality comes to you and as you look back, the only thing that makes sense is the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5, he says, For we brought nothing into this world, and for sure we can take nothing back. Solomon built buildings, orchards, gardens, had many wives, and anything his heart desired, Solomon went after it, but he could not take it to the grave. I want to tell you something. Whatever you accomplish in this life, it is good to accomplish. It is good to be wealthy. It is good to have a home for yourself and a vehicle to drive. It is good to have a piece of plot that you can raise your family on. 
It is good to have some investment and money in the bank. It is good to have all of these. But let me say to you, when time shall be no more, when the breath leaves you and you have passed away, what is going to happen to you, brethren, is that you will be in the casket like Brother Harvey Wright and you will take nothing with you. Are you with me? You cannot take your beauty as well. Some of you look beautiful. All of you look beautiful. But in the grave there is no beauty. Are you with me? Solomon is saying to us, hey, what matters most in life is living a life that where you are contented with Jesus, where you are at one with your maker, where you can say to the Lord, oh Lord, I am satisfied. I have lived my life in Christ. For under the sun, it is only vanity. I ask the family members of the late Harvey Wright, one of our members, I asked them about him. Tell me about this man in the casket and hear what they said. They said he was a lovely man, a kind man. They said he was a jovial man. In fact, in, in French, in, French in, 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 in Creole, in Jamaican Patois and Creole, they said, man, the man could make a good joke, you know. There was never a dull moment with Brother Wright. He was a man that, could, that would give you the last of his belongings. And if he had two hearts and his son needed a heart, he would say, son, hey, look at heart. Here is a heart. A man always ready to give of what he has. A kind man who was selfless. Are you with me? A man who had consideration for the less fortunate and those in need. A man who was not puffed up. A man who was not arrogant. A man who was not prideful. But a man who was considerate. Let me say something to you. When you die, that's what people are going to talk about you. When people die, they don't say, you know, you had a nice car. Oh, you had a big house. Oh, you had a big job. That's not what they say. They speak about the good things, the good qualities that you possessed. And that is why as we live our life, it must be lived with kindness and, and being polite and being loving and being caring and being godly. Are you with me? We live in a culture where the love of many has uh, waxed cold and men have become brazen. We live in a society where sometimes you are afraid to go to drive home at night because you are afraid of gunmen laying in wait for you to harm you. We live in a culture where there are some people who are afraid to return to Jamaica to build because they know how violent we are. We live in a culture where men and women and boys and girls are being killed left, right and center. And, and, and so much so that the Bible said, this will what is what will happen in the end of time. And we are just living it out. But to you who are here, under the hearing of my voice, you can make a determined effort to live a godly life. To live a loving life. To care for those around you. I can tell you something. There is someone today that you need to call and say, Mommy, I love you. I got a call this morning of a very good friend who had a father and a nice father. And she said to me, Joel, Papa is gone. Papa is gone. Last night, we rushed him to the hospital, and the diagnosis is it's fluid. 
he died. I said, did you get the time to tell him how much you love him? How much you are grateful and thankful that he sent you to school and was a good father to you? Did you ever tell him that you appreciate his work? Did you ever tell him how much you love him? Let me tell you something. It is okay to come and give tributes at a service of Thanksgiving or a funeral service. But listen, it is better to inform your loved ones while they are alive. Give them their roses while they are alive. And say, I am thankful, Papa. I am thankful, Uncle. I am thank you. I'm thankful, Mommy, that you raised me into, the, in, into this Christian faith. I'm thankful that you worked hard to send me to school. Listen to me. You need to spread the love while they are alive alive because Mr. Harvey Wright cannot see anything here he cannot experience anything here it is, it, it is vanity and vexation of spirit yes you are honoring his life but he needed it before he died are you with me Brother Harvey cannot see the photos and these nice things we have done for him. He will not hear your tributes. He will not see the flowers. He will not even know who is in attendant here today because he is gone away from us. He is dead. And for those who believe that Brother Harvey Wright still is looking down in heaven and, and seeing what is going on, I want to say to you, it is not like that. He is dead. In our culture, we believe that the dead can still talk. In our culture, we believe that they are looking down on us. In our culture, we believe that we must pass the baby over the casket, that the evil spirit doesn't go into the rest of the siblings. In our culture, we believe we must do a nine nights. In our culture, we believe we must do manish water and, ha and have the grave digging and have some rum and some cigarette. Hello? In our culture, we believe and many believe still that Mr. Harvey, Brother Harvey Wright, still can observe what is going on. So much so that family members will say, don't put so-and-so on the funeral program because he's looking down and he would not be happy. Because he never did pay him the loan he gave to him. Are you with me? But the Bible says, when we die in Ecclesiastes, that our death, everything, love, hate, it perishes. There is nothing no more. It is, it is, it, it is nothing. You are dead. But the Bible tells us, dead is not, death is not final. We are told that those who die in Christ shall be part of of the first resurrection. But let me tell you something. Do you like to go hotel? Do you like to go to Sandals Hotel? Would you like it if we give you two nights at the Sandal Hotel, each one of you? Hmm? Would you like it? Would you like it? Today, you take your tired self and you drive down to Rose Hall and you spend two nights at Sandals Hotel and you go to the spa and they do your manicure, mannequin or whatever, the, the manicure and they do your nails and your feet and, and you just relax and food comes to you. And listen to me, five-star dining and you go in the pool and you bathe and, and listen to me, the white sand beach is right there and you have first-class dining, five-star accommodation and you just take a rest and your tired body just sleeps. Would you like that? Man, if you tell me you're giving me that today, me left this sermon now and me gone. Are you with me? Oh, you would like a vacation? 
to big farin. Jamaicans don't go little farin, they go to big farin. Would you like those things? Would you like these courtesies? Would you like this treatment? But let me tell you something. There is something better than two nights at Sandals Hotel. There is something better than two nights at Ryu. There is something better than Big Farin. Let me tell you something. The Bible tells us that those who die in Christ, they are going to experience eternity. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21 that God is going to change this corrupted body and give us a new body, one that cannot die, one that is fashioned after his glorious body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 16 and 18 tells us that when the dead in Christ, when the Lord shall come with the trump of God and the Lord himself shall come, the Lord will say, if brother Harvey Wright died in Christ, he will say, Harvey Wright, be raised from the grave and let me tell you something, no grave can keep his body down. He shall have a new body. He shall have a new life. One that will be passed from mortal to immortality and listen to me and then we will go to heaven to spend 1,000 years with the Lord and after this thousand years the new Jerusalem will descend from heaven so shall we ever be with the Lord are you with me? that is better than hotel that is better than big farin what do you say? Some of you, the only gold you have is fake gold. Are you with me? Because you are like me, you cannot afford gold. Are you with me? And sometimes you have a little bling bling on your hand, but it's a $2,000 watch you have from the Chinese. And you just let it look like it's a sin thing you have. Are you with me? Are you with me? And, and some of us go and we have nice glasses, but are not prescription glasses. Them just look like prescription glasses. But we just want to look like a nice. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And some of us, this is not our hair, you know. Many of us, this is not our hair, you know. Oh, my friend here who looks at the front here, nice dark lady, that's her hair. But for many people, and my friend over there, natural and lovely, but for many ladies, they are not as fortunate as you because the hair cannot grow. Old age, it's just white. Are you with me? And then you put makeups, so much makeups, because you're trying to look like you used to when you were 16. And you know, I met a lady last week in the, in the supermarket. And I said, and she said, Pastor, how are you doing? And I said, yes, how are you doing? And she said, yes, you, you don't remember me? And I said, no, man, where me know you from? She said, yes, man, you don't remember me? I said, yeah, no, tell me where. She said, I'm me, this pastor. And I said, what? So what happened? She said, Pastor, the makeups, man. Pastor, you know when we're getting old, that's how the thing's set. Because we are trying to look younger. We use the bling bling to give us a little more value. But bling bling can't give you value. And we try everything in our power to reverse aging. Scientists are looking for new drugs to reverse aging. But let me say something to you. Whether you put lipstick, whether you put makeup, whether you put bling bling, it is a corrupted body and it is going to fail you. But the Bible says, my children will not walk on asphalt. You see this thing here? This is asphalt. But my children will walk in the streets of gold. Are you with me? Are you with me? 
walls of Jespers they will see. The new Jerusalem they will enjoy. The revelation tells us the Lord, there shall be no more cry, no more tears, no more pain, no more backstabbing, no more badmanship, no more nothing like that, no more sickness, no more, no more pain, no more sorrow. None of that will be here. Why? Because the former things would have passed away. In the new Jerusalem, with the Lord, you shall have an immortal body. And that's what he has promised for those who live for him and die in Christ. You see Brother Nemad here? You see Brother Nemad? Brother Nemad is a senior citizen, lovely man. With his wife, where his beautiful wife. Supposing you see a photo of Brother Nemard when he was 18 years, that demon looked good. Bossy, handsome, strong. See what age did to him? He was still handsome and bossy, you know. But age has done something to him. When I saw him at 36 in his photo, what a handsome man with his handsome, with his pretty wife. Age has done something to them. He is closer to the grave now than ever before. All of us. But apart from streets of gold and walls of jasper and living for eternity, the Bible tells us that we will have a new body, one that cannot get sick. You will look as handsome as you can and pretty as you can. Are you with me? This is the gifts for those who die in Christ. Let me tell you something. You see Satan? Satan don't want that for you. Satan will teach you in private and graduate you in public. Satan knows what the Lord has for his children and his mind is to distract them from eternity. You think Satan wants that for you? Satan doesn't want that for the child of the living God. And Satan's goal, because he will never experience what the child of God can experience, so his role now, it is to distract any and everybody from eternity. And his goal is to distract you with all manner of life and all manner of issues of life, because his goal is to distract you from heaven. Are you with me? Don't let him distract you. Don't let him distract you. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 6 rather, Paul is going to die. He's in prison in Rome and his young protege, Timothy, is pastoring a troubled church. Paul tells Timothy, for we brought nothing into this world and into, into this world and with these and nothing we shall carry out. With food and raiment we shall be content. He told him about the love of money being the root of all the evil. Then Paul tells him something, told him something that we need to take very seriously. He said, but you, man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Are you with me? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He told Timothy to flee the worldly things and instead pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness, and he said to him, fight the good fight of faith. But there is something that he told Timothy that I want you to understand. Because nothing in this life matters more than this. He said to him, 
1 Timothy 6, verse 12. Paul is going to die very soon. He's an old man in prison. His neck will be cut off very soon by King Nero of Rome. And he said to Timothy, lay hold of eternal life. Forget the things of the world. Pursue righteousness. But more, Sister Megan, lay hold of eternal life. You know how you lay hold of something? Lay hold of it. When I used to walk with my mother, and she tells me to hold her hand because we are walking in the city, Rosa. And she said, boy, hold my hand. And sometimes me, me want to walk by myself. I never did like, you know, as a 10-year-old boy to have holding my mother hand and my friends seen me holding my mother hand. Me never did like that. And my mother knows the psychology, you know. And especially Pastor Brown, when me, for me friends them, you know. Say, Come, boy. Walk, you're a little boy. What do you think? You're not a big man yet. Are you with me? She would lay hold of me. <laughs> Are you with me? And I remember one time I responded. She asked me a question. And I said to her, me you asking now? Don't you say, boy, you pass your place. You peep in far. And she lay hold of me again. In a, and she had, a, she had a, a wood, a piece of wood in, in her hand. And she gave me whap, whap. Boy, never say that to me again. You pass your place. Up till this day, I never said this to anybody again. That you need, it, it's good to discipline children. Not with the whap, whap. Those times are gone. But she lay hold of me. She lay hold of me. That's how you need to lay hold of eternal life. Lay hold of it. Never let it leave you. But I will tell you, Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. You cannot lay hold of salvation without Jesus. So let him hold your hands, brothers and sisters. I will end with this story. There was a man and a boy who were going on a far journey. And you know some people have sweaty hands. You know, you, you, you know that? Feed them hands just sweat plenty. How do you call it? You all call it in the culture, Pastor Brown, when they have sweaty hands. There's a name you all use. Well, Brother Rose and Pastor Brown, they're not two Jamaicans. They're foreign. They are foreign, foreign people. But there's a, there's, a, there's a nomenclature that is used when you have sweaty hand in Jamaica. And this boy was walking with his father, but his father had sweaty hands. And he held his father's hands to walk on the journey. But then he, the hand, because it's sweaty, it quickly released. And then he held his father's hand again. And they walked, they continued walking. But the sweaty palm, you know, released again. It happened a third time. And then the boy looked at his father and he said, Daddy, my hands are too small. Why don't you hold my hands? Your big hands, Daddy. And his daddy reached down and with his big hands and held the little boy's hand and walked with him and he never fell again. Let daddy hold your hands. You will never fall again. As we celebrate the life and times of Mr. Harvey Wright, he was a baptized member of this church. A 
baptized member of this church. He gave his life to, 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 to the Lord. And if he died in Christ, eternity awaits him. Beulah land awaits him. What about you? Can you say that today? Can you say that today? Can you say that my heart is well with the Lord? Can you say that today? 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 If you cannot say that today, I want to warn you that you can leave the gates of this premises and be struck down and we will be planning your funeral service in weeks to come. Life is not certain to any one of you. Make your calling an election. Sure. God bless you. Amen. Got to hold the mic in this hand. Pastor imposed such a battery on my other hand. But it's okay. You'll hear from my lawyer. All right. Um, the pastor has spoken. He's told it like it is. Lay hold upon faith. And I've discovered, going through life, that the best way to lay hold on your faith is to be able to let go of something you love in the interest of helping someone who needs it. This is a good place for you to start looking in your pocketbooks as I call the ushers forward or the deacons forward to collect the offering that will go to help the needy, the challenged, through the Adventist Community Center that we have here and across the world. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to acquire so that we can disperse. We pray that as we give, we may give our hearts and our souls, our minds and our strength to glorifying you by relieving the needs of the challenge. May these offerings be used to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will sing during the offertory, How Great Thou Art. It's in the program. Let's go. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thine hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. It's in the program. If God is great, let's sing about it. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. And on the cross 
My burdens gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sins. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God, how great thou art. Let's go. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Thank you. We will now have, we'll now resume our tributes. The first one will be by Joseph Watson followed by the Richmond Park Church of Christ, Joseph Watson. All right, wait. okay, good. So, Mr. Wright, Harvey Wright, as he was affectionately called. Some, for some, it was Daddy Wright. For me, it was Uncle. My memory of Uncle goes away back. When I say way back, not too far, far back. But I remember somewhere about in 2019, I was called to do some work at the house. And having been there working with other workmen, the work was, yes, supervised by Rennie, of course. And um, while we were there working, he would come and inspect various stages of the work. He was very hilarious. He was a man with a big smile and full of many jokes, as you, as you would have heard. And so while I was there doing my part, he came around and he said, so hold on, I want a factory? You think a factory? And for me, I burst out in laughter, right? And the other is, it was for the very, he, he would, you know, scrutinize the work that was being done by the different, like I said, persons. I remember he has a connection and a love for his brother, Bob Z. Wright. And so when he took sick, yeah, as a matter of fact, when Bob Z. passed away, he would have said to myself and to some of the, the caregivers how much he missed his brother. And he would be there crying at times over his, the passing of his brother. And so he would ask if we could get in touch with the pastor. And I did. Pastor West, for this church at the time, came up and see him and have a talk with him. And he, you know, he said, I cannot help, but I will have to see my brother when Jesus comes again. And so he decided that he would definitely love to get baptized. And so in 2019, 
he was baptized right here in this church. And I can tell you that I have um, friends here who were friends with Mr. Wright, such as Danny. Danny, I think you are somewhere down there in the back. And many other persons who would tell you they have a lot of fun with Mr. Wright. And I say, friend, he was a good man. Yeah? He was a good man. That's all I have to say right now. In his hands, reach out and touch him if, if you can, can, if you can. From the highest mountain to the low, his valley can hold the power in his hands. Whether you're ready or not, ready or not, my Jesus is coming. Whether you ready or not, ready or he's coming again. Whether you ready or not, my Jesus is coming. Whether you ready or not, ready or not, he's coming again. Bless the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Bless the Lord. Shall we give thanks to God this morning? On behalf of the Richmond Park Church of Christ, Richmond Park family, condolences to the right family. Um, we know the father and the mother of Mr. Wright, and they were such a lovely couple. We and um, Trevor go to school together, Trevor Wright. Praise God. And I am so blessed to be here because I remember back days. When I have family in my past, this man and brother, brother, the other brother, what name again? Bobsy. Brother Bobs, you were dear for me. And I am so happy and I am so glad that I am here to brace you up. So just ride out your storm and hold on to King Jesus. Because yes, Jesus Lord. is all the world to us. Our life, our joy, and he's our all. We praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm only a pilgrim and stranger In this only world that I'm in Oh Jesus brought me the darkness I promised me a heavenly home In the Bible we read of the city Whose builder and ruler is God. And someday when this life is over, its beautiful sight will be oh, my longing for hope. On going down. I want to go where sweet rest can be found. I'm just about through, just about through, where the whole house of clay. I'm leaving this world, leaving this world. For glory someday 
When the last weary mile of been traveled, and the gate of the city swing wide, oh, what a glad day it will be to know that heaven in his mind beyond the dark clouds of sorrow. With Jesus forever I'll be Out to that city I'm going Behold the Savior to see I'm longing for home Longing for home The sun going down I want to go in, sweet rest can be found, I'm just about through, just about through, where the whole house of clay, yes, is leaving this world, Living in this world for glory someday. Yes, he's living in this world. Living in this world for glory someday. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we worship? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Rest in peace and light perpetual shine. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, please. Now uh, comes the eulogy. The eulogy will be done by Dion Wright, daughter. Thereafter, the prayer for the bereaved family by Pastor Giovanni Brown, followed by the instructions by Pastor Schillingford. Good morning, church. Afternoon now. <laughs> Afternoon, church. My name is Dion Wright. Yeah. Um, I'm the youngest of seven for Mr. Harvey Clinton Wright, of which we are here today to celebrate. Harvey Clinton Wright, to many, known as Carl, was born the youngest of seven children, the baby to Ivalyn and Mortimer Wright. Dad had seven siblings, um, Dad was, um, sorry, Dad had six siblings and they all grew up in Richmond Park, Clarendon. Daddy was a postman, painter, and a tractor sprayer. But it was whilst working in Kingston with good friend Miguel Fritz, now my godfather, Dad met and fell in love with Ruby, our beloved mother. They emigrated to England in 1962. Mum and Dad had seven children, two of which were born in the UK, of which I am one of them. Mum and Dad both lived full lives. Dad loved to entertain. He was a loving, friendly, happy-go-lucky and welcoming man if he met you. He was glad to celebrate you. Dad was also a comedian, full of joke. <laughs> but it was after their retirement, mum and dad retired, decided to return home to Jamaica, where they settled in Mandeville and acquired a few friends. 
But sadly, due to ill health, our beloved mum passed. Leaving dad on his own, he did the best he could for himself. But again, sadly, due to ill health, dad passed on the 18th of February, 2024. So dad, I'd just like to say thank you from all your children, your remaining siblings, your 15 grandchildren, who love and respect you immensely, Dad. You are deeply missed and will be remembered in our hearts forever. Sleep in peace, Dad. Mum also, from Dion, siblings, and all family and friends. We love you, Dad. Blessed Lord. Could the congregation outside of the immediate family members, we invite you to join in standing while the family members remain seated. We'll be having a prayer for the bereaved family. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear loving Father, we thank you firstly for the long life that you have given. We thank you that amidst all the possibilities of peril, you have preserved life from 1938 until now. That you have facilitated time for impact and love. That you have facilitated healthy, long life and a man who gave his life totally to you. So Father, we currently place those persons who he has left behind in your hallowed palm. Father, I pray that you will bring to them a sense of peace even amidst this horrific hurt. God, I pray that your knowledge, your guidance, your truth will bring light to their minds, will bring light to their lives during this time. And for those who have not given their lives fully to Jesus, we pray that even this will be a reminder of its import, of its necessity for their life. And ultimately, God, we want a family reunion in your heavenly kingdom. So we pray that there is no person here by the hook or the crook who will be lost from your kingdom because they have rejected you. But Father, we pray that every person will grow in sufficient wisdom to realize the value of giving their lives to Jesus. And ultimately, when we all get to heaven, we are looking forward to the day of rejoicing that that will be. Continue to lead, continue to guide this family as their relationships are to flourish, are to get better. People talking, not talking. We pray that you will provide healing during this time. That the relationships of these family members will grow and blossom. They will remind one another that they actually value and care that they love each other and that at the end of it all, the family would have been made better as a result. Bless and guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to thank you for being a gracious audience, gracious congregation, you will agree with me that we truly celebrated the life and times of the late Henry Wright. Harvey, Harvey Wright. 
let me first thank you, all those who supported the family members. Let me thank his son for doing so dutifully, and his daughter, his other children. And there is one we must thank. He's on the camera now, Brother Joseph, from the passing of Brother Harvey. He has been at it, telling us, informing the church, assisting with Brother Rennie to ensure that everything goes well. We thank you, Brother Joseph, for your service of love to the family. Here are some instructions. At the singing of the song, It is well with my soul. At the second stanza, the platform party will descend. After which, the pallbearers will follow with the casket. We are making our exit through the foyer, the door straight here. We would like to shake your hands as you leave the church. After the casket or follow, or after the casket, the, well, the immediate family members will follow the casket, then other well-wishers and friends. The service of internment will be at the Oakland Memorial Gardens. You follow the procession and you will get there. It's at Dunson Nain. After the service of committal, we will convene here for a repass. The family and the, fam the immediate family of the late Wright wishes to give you something to munch on as you go to your homes. So after the service of committal, we will have a small repast right here. I'm going to invite you now to stand and also invite the pallbearers to stand guard at the casket. We'll be singing the hymn of departure, It Is Well With My Soul. Please stand. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. With my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul it is well with 
with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul, it is well with my soul.